Okay, Mustangs. This is for third, fourth, and fifth graders about the five components of health-related fitness. The first thing I want you to remember is that any exercise you do, whether it's doing our PE lap, or playing on the playground, or stretching, or walking around the park, you will use one or more of the five components of health-related fitness. Not just in PE, but also in sports, activities, cleaning, yard work, doing things around the house. Anytime you move your body and exercise, you will be using these five components of health-related fitness. Now, in this lesson, our objective, that means what we mean to do, we're going to learn the definition, assessment, and application of these five components. Now, remember the definition means what it is, the words that define it what it is and defines each component. Assessment is, we're going to discuss, talk about how we can test ourselves to know we are getting better and to set fitness goals. And the application, that means how we can use this knowledge to help us actually do these exercises and complete these components of fitness with everything we do. These are the five components of health-related fitness. There are five of them. First is muscle strength, also known as muscular strength. The second is muscle endurance, also known as muscular endurance. The third is cardiovascular endurance, oftentimes called cardio. Fourth is flexibility. And the fifth is body composition. Muscular strength. Just look at that picture. Does that seem like lightweight or heavyweight? So what is muscular strength? Muscular strength is the maximum amount of force a muscle or a group of muscles can exert once or only a few times before fatigue. That means pretty much the strongest that you can do something only one or a couple times before you get tired and have to rest or your muscles, they just fail on you, okay? Now look at number one. It says muscular strength does not need oxygen for energy. Another word for that, and this is kind of a fancy word that you will learn later as you get to middle school and high school, is what's called anaerobic. Anaerobic equals, or that means, that no oxygen is needed for that exercise. Aerobic kind of means oxygen, and an is kind of like no. So no oxygen needed, anaerobic. Look at number two. Muscular strength usually lasts no more than a few repetitions of heavy weight. Rem remember that a repetition is how many times you can do something. Now, if you can only do something a couple times before you have to stop, it's usually because you're lifting heavier weight. Now, here are some examples of muscular strength. So, moderate to heavy weight training, that means medium to heavy, but usually it tends to be heavier, such as a bench press, a barbell squat, that's what the guy's doing in the picture, weighted push-ups, which means you're doing push-ups and you add some weight to yourself, 
But oftentimes push-ups can be muscular strength too, especially when you are young. And pull-ups. We practice those in class. Moving heavy furniture. Flipping a heavy tire. Pushing a wheelbarrow filled with rocks. I do that every summer. And any heavy force from the muscles is muscular strength. It's also good to remember that strength sounds quite like strong. So strong and strength. It's a good way to help you remember it. Benefits of muscular strength. Look at that picture. That is a strong bone. Remember that benefit means something that helps you. It can help you build muscle mass and tone. That means it can help sculpt your body. Improve performance of daily and physical activities. An example of that is you feel better while you're playing with your friends on the playground. Or while you're helping your mom or dad or someone you live with carry groceries. Muscular strength can also prevent injuries and diseases. That means it can keep you from being sick or breaking a bone or hurting your back. Now, the picture just shows what we talked about. Stronger bones increases bone density. Density means how compact and rock hard your bones can be. Muscular strength makes them more dense. And lastly, it improves your body composition. Having more muscle mass increases your metabolism. What that means is you'll tend to have a little bit more muscle and less fat when you do muscular strength activities. And more muscle means your metas metabolism speeds up. That means you can actually eat and burn more calories because you have more muscle mass. Now let's talk about, that's what debrief and discuss means. Let's have a quick little conversation. And I want you to think about this and you can pause this video and think to yourself. What is muscular strength? Now think about how is it different from muscular endurance. And if you don't know yet, hold that thought because we're going to talk soon about muscular endurance. What exercises did Coach talk about that can improve my muscular strength? What can you think of exercises that I did not talk about already a few minutes ago? There are more. Now, what are ways we can assess our muscular strength? Think repetitions. I'm going to give you some hints and help you with this because I really want you to think about this. Assess means how can we test ourselves. So let's say I go to the gym. I get on that big heavy squat machine or big barbell on my back like the guy in the picture. And I put some weights on it. Maybe I put, let's say, 50 pounds. And I can do it three times. Three times is my goal. That's my repetition. Three times. Well, maybe I go to the gym two times a week. And I do that same weight three times. Well, I notice after a month that I can do instead of 50 pounds three times, I can now do 60 pounds three times before I have to quit. I can write these numbers down and I can realize that I'm making progress. That means I'm testing myself and I know that I'm getting stronger. And this means I can set a goal. Maybe I could say, by the end of the summer, I want to do 70 pounds three times. Muscular endurance.
What is muscular endurance? Muscular endurance is the ability of a muscle or muscle group to exert a force repeatedly, that means many times, over time. These repeated repetitions are typically more than 10 to 15 times in a row. So I want you to remember, if you're doing them that much, it's not going to be heavy weight. This component of fitness often overlaps with cardiovascular endurance, also known as cardio. But there are two differences. First off, muscular endurance does not need oxygen for energy. Remember, it does not. So that makes it similar to muscular strength, but they are not the same. But muscular endurance, like muscular strength, is anaerobic. Your body does not need oxygen to do muscular endurance in exercises. It does not need oxygen. Now, muscular endurance usually lasts no more than a few minutes before you have to rest. Or you're going to start needing oxygen. And then the exercise moves into becoming a cardio exercise. So as you can see, some exercises start off using muscular endurance. And eventually, that means later, they become a cardio or cardiovascular endurance exercise. Remember, these components of fitness can overlap, and you can use two or more sometimes for the same exercise. Here are some good examples of muscular endurance. Take a look at the picture on the right. Some of these, actually most of these, we do in physical education at Sandia Base Elementary School. So we have jumping row, sit-ups, curl-ups, planks. All of our PE warm-up exercises, sprints, and quick races, no less than one to two minutes. Now, lifting light weights, many repetitions. Remember, this is different than muscular strength because we are now lifting many more times in a row, 15 or more, and it's lighter weight. Calisthenics and body weight exercises, that means very similar to things we do for our PE warm-up exercises. Jumping jacks, high knees, skiers, mountain climbers, those are examples of muscular endurance. Now, let's go back really quick to where it says sprints and quick races. A lot of kids have, uh, often ask me, well, isn't that cardio? And my answer is this. Imagine that I plug my nose in my mouth and I cannot breathe, but I'm only doing this safely to do an experiment with an adult, and I run from one end of the gym to the other really fast. Maybe I run there and back twice. Now, I can do this without breathing. I didn't need oxygen. That's why quick sprints and quick races, they're muscular endurance. Now, if I went outside and ran a lap, I could not hold my breath because I would need to breathe. I would need oxygen. So running a lap is longer than a sprint, and it becomes a cardiovascular endurance exercise. So as you can see, muscular endurance can sometimes transition. That means moves into cardiovascular endurance. Benefits of muscular endurance. Check out the picture on the right. There's some cool answers. It's very similar to muscular strength. Helping you with daily activities. Keeping you from getting hurt. 
stronger bones, more energy, better body composition, and overall it's going to make you feel better. And one of my favorite things is look at the heart. Relieves stress in my life. Muscular endurance exercises can really help you relieve stress, feel better, and sleep better. Now this is more for my 5th graders, but you 3rd and 4th graders can look at this chart. Once you get to middle school, you're going to learn more anatomy because you will be taking a health class. These are some examples of muscular endurance exercises. Now look where the arrows are pointed. These tend to be smaller muscles. Do a quick experiment. You can pause this video, do 20 sit-ups, or even do 20 crunches. And feel these muscles. We have the rectus abdominis, serratus anterior, internal and external obliques. If you ever want to become a doctor or a nurse, or in the medical profession, you will learn anatomy and physiology, and you will have to name many, many more muscles. It's very interesting. So, let's think for a sec. Let's debrief and discuss. What is muscular endurance? Think to yourself. How is it different than muscular strength? How is it similar? I gave you guys answers. Remember, anaerobic means does not need oxygen. So what do you think aerobic means? Now, what exercises can help you with your muscular endurance? How can you assess your muscular endurance capacity? That means, how can you assess yourself? Think of repetitions. Maybe my goal is to do 20 sit-ups in a row. Maybe I do it twice a week. Maybe the first week I can only do 15 in a row. The next week I can do 20. By writing this number down, I can set a goal and I can try to assess myself to see how long it takes me to do that goal. If you practice, you will get better. And what can this information, that's what data means, tell us about setting our fitness goals? I gave you guys some hints, so think about that. Cardiovascular endurance, also known as cardio. Cardiovascular endurance means sustained activity involving the heart and lungs. Did you know that the word cardio, it comes from the Greeks from a long time ago, and that word referred to the human heart. Cardio means heart. So remember that cardio is aerobic. That's this word right here, aerobic. That is different than anaerobic. Aerobic means it uses oxygen. Like the word sustained and continuous, it means this exercise is for long, steady periods of time. This increases your heart rate. And anytime you hear endurance training, it's always cardio. And usually it can start off as muscular endurance, but endurance training usually means for a longer period of time, and that involves cardiovascular endurance. And remember, it can also be used with muscular endurance. Here are some PE examples. We do our PE lap when we run laps. We do our pacer test when we run back and forth across the gym. Now, soccer can be muscular endurance and cardio. But especially soccer is cardio when you're doing it for a long period of time and you have to start breathing and using oxygen. 
That's the same with basketball. Same with jumping rope. I can jump rope 20 times in a row with my breath closed. But after two minutes or so, maybe even a minute, I have to start breathing. Dancing. After about 20 seconds, I need to start breathing and I need to, if I want to keep dancing. It's a great form of cardio. And calisthenics. PE warm-up exercises. If we keep doing those for longer periods of time, they move from muscular endurance into cardio exercises. Now I get this is probably the question I get asked the most as a physical educator. Coach, why do I have to run? These are the benefits of cardio. Benefit means it helps you. Helps you build stronger bones, stronger heart, stronger muscles, gives you more energy, reduces health risks. That means it keeps you healthier and it prevents diseases, makes your brain smarter, more activity up in that brain, helps you sleep better. I don't know about you, but I like to sleep well. Cardio will help you sleep like a champion. Now, cardio also allows you to set individual goals, monitor your progress. A good example of this is when people run 5Ks or marathons, or even if I want to say, I would like to be able to run around my neighborhood longer than five minutes without taking a break. Or maybe I can run on a trail in the mountains for 20 minutes straight. I can set goals for myself. Now remember, I have kindergartners all the way through fifth grade learning to check their pulse. Remember, the, it's called the carotid. And I tell the little champs this. It's your neck between your ear and your chin using two fingers. We never want to use our thumb because our thumb actually has its own pulse, its own heart rate, and it can confuse us and mess us up when we're counting. Now look at B. B is radial. That's the radial artery. Radial is usually easier to find. If you remember, wrist, where you wear your watch, wrist kind of sounds like radial, radial wrist. Use two thumbs and check your pulse, check your heart rate especially during cardio. Now, this is exactly what we did on the first week of our online learning. Please go back to the heart rate lesson from week one where you use a partner and this will explain everything. You can also read through this as it explains. The main goal to remember is that beats per minute is like miles per hour on a car. It's a way that scientists and physiologists, which is a fancy word for people who study exercise, they come up with a way to gauge or to see how fast your heart can pump during exercise. So, like a car can go 60 miles per hour, we can test our own hearts to see how many beats they pump per minute. We can use this data, that means this information, to tell us what kind of exercise we're doing and how we can improve and be healthy. Flexibility. This is probably one of the easiest of the five components to remember. Because most kindergarten through fifth graders, they know the word flex or flexible. And they know that it has something to do with stretching our body. Look at the picture in the middle. So what is flexibility? Well, flexibility is the ability of your joints and muscles to move freely Without injury, that means safely, through a range of motion. 
range of motion means actually how many degrees that it can move. How much can it move? Which directions? This component of fitness actually will help you with all the other components. And the best and easiest way to test yourself, that means to assess yourself, is by stretching and doing activities that stretch the body. One thing to remember, everyone, all ages, can improve their flexibility as long as they stay active and they stretch weekly. A good routine to remember, a good routine is to stretch at least twice a week with warm muscles, usually after you work out. Here are some examples. We do a lot of stretching in PE, especially at the end of our exercises. Yoga, dancing, especially ballet dancing, but all dancing usually helps your body become more flexible because you're moving your body in so many positions. Swimming and martial arts. Think of martial artists and the types of stretching and moves that they do. Their body has a wide range of motion. How can flexibility help you? Well, there's some benefits of being more flexible. You're not going to get hurt as much. Think of your muscles. The stretchier your muscles are, the less they are going to actually snap or rip and tear. Improve posture. You ever heard your mom or your dad or someone say, sit up straight or stop hunching over? I did as a kid. <laughs> well, improved posture means if I stretch and I'm more flexible, that means my body can actually be in the correct position when I sleep, when I walk, when I sit. I'm going to be more upright. I'm going to have better balance, especially with all the activities and exercise I'm doing. Actually, being more flexible makes you think more clearly. Your body feels better, so your brain is going to feel better. Overall, flexibility is going to help you in every type of exercise. So how do we get better? How do we improve our flexibility? Well, like I said before, we want to try to stretch at least twice a week. We want to focus on two types of stretching. Now look at the word dynamic. That means moving through a range of motion, such as dancing and mar martial arts movements. That means I am not sitting still, stretching. I'm moving. I'm flowing. Think about dancing, martial arts. My muscles are moving and stretching at the same time in a safe way. Now, another way is static. We do quite a bit of static stretching in PE where coach gives you a freezed position and we have to hold it. As we hold it, our muscles get longer. They slightly stretch. And then next time they stretch even more. And that makes us more flexible. That's why I always say at least hold a stretch for 30 seconds as long as you're in, not in pain in a safe way. A little bit of discomfort is okay. A good way to do this is to pick a joint. That means maybe you stretch somewhere on your shoulder or your knee or your back in a safe way. and See how far you can stretch. And then try it again at the end of another week. You will notice your muscles become more and more stretchier. You are improving your flexibility. And never stretch cold muscles. Make sure you always do a little bit of a warm-up. Okay? Get those muscles warm. Body composition.
Body composition. Body composition is a fancy word for what your body is made of. Now look at this picture. It shows a body and it says, see what you are made of. We have protein, minerals, body fat mass, total body water. Well, you just need to know that body uh, composition is how much muscle, minerals, fat, bone, and water you have in your body and how much of each of those. Now remember, this is assessed, I mean, this is tested by a health professional. We do not do this in PE. We do talk about how we can eat healthier to increase muscle, and there are some healthy fats that we can eat. But remember that body composition is something that's private for everybody, and everybody is different, has their own body composition. You do not need to worry about others and their body composition. But you do need to know that your body composition is important to your overall health and fitness. And that practicing all components of fitness can help you get to an optimal body composition. Optimal means what is a healthy range. Okay, so optimal body composition means for your age and your height, what body composition you should be to be healthy and not get sick. Okay, here is a fun little exercise that I put at the end of this lesson. Now, look at all the pictures. We have walking, dancing, skipping, cycling, water aerobics. Ooh, aerobic, I see that word. What is that? Swimming, gardening, hiking, tennis, push-ups, yoga, tai chi. Remember, tai chi is a martial art. Exercise bands, weight machines, and weight lifting. Hmm. What if the weight machines are really light and the weight lifting is really heavy? Here's a fun little exercise, and you can practice this with your mom and dad or parent guardian, aunts, uncles, friends, brothers, sisters, neighbors. Pick a square picture and describe which of the five components of health-related fitness best fits this exercise. So think about all of those. Pick one, look at it, and then try to match one of the five components of fitness do you think it uses the most? Remember, some exercises can use more than one. Okay? Now, you can ask a family member, like I said before, to quiz you and play along. You can also create your own squares because there are thousands of exercises not shown here and all exercise uses those five components. Thanks for listening. And remember to go back through any of these five components that you were kind of confused about. And don't worry, once you see me again in the gym, in class, I will promise you I will make sure that we clear up any confusion and we learn these together. Fifth graders, as you go into middle school, like I said when I saw you in class uh, on Google Meet, remember, please study these. And if you have any questions, you can email me or talk to me in class. These are the five components. I hope all is doing well. Take care, Mustangs.